Hi, part two of Vesper. So we're going to do five and six electron domains. So real quick review, electron domains, that's looking at the central atom and counting how many electron domains are around that. Electron domain, domains are simply the electrons that um, exist um, as a lone pair, single bond, double or triple bond around that central atom. Um, so let's look at this. I have over here, um, this is going to be um, the number of, let's see here, uh, bonds. This is going to be the number of bond electron domains. This one right here is going to be the lone pair electrons, okay, lone pair electrons. Um, and then this right here, this is going to be based off of total, the total electron domains. So when you add both the um, bonded and the lone pair together, total electron domains. Um, these names right here are the molecular geometry. And remember, molecular geometry is what we could see. We can't see lone pairs. So it's the actual shape. If we could see it, what we would see. Um, I will write off to the side the, um, let's do the electron geometries. Because remember, for um, five electron domains, it will have one electron geometry. Six electron domains has one electron geometry. And I'll show that to you. Then we've got the angle and we have an example. Okay, so let's begin. I have right here five electron domains. And the example that they give us is a phosphorus pentachloride. So let me write this down. Phosphorus pentachloride, we have P, and then you got your Cl, 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 Cl. And every chlorine is going to have three um, electron domains around it. Now, to figure out number of electron domains, you only count around the central atom. There's one, two, three, four, five electron domains. Let me show you here. We've got one, two, three, four, and five. Five electron domains. Um, the electron geometry for this is the trigonal bipyramidal. So let's write this down. Trigonal bipyramidal. Now, trying to make this make sense so you can memorize it. Um, this is what we're going to do. We are going to um, connect, if you look at this, if you look at this, um, if I took um, this middle part, so I'm gonna have you look at the middle part, looks like a triangle. Now turning it this way, if I did a face, one, two, and three, that could look like a pyramid. So there's your triangle, and if I connected the faces, it would look like a pyramid. I'd have a pyramid on the top, a pyramid on the bottom, hence the name trigonal bipyramidal. Two pyramids stuck on top of each other. Pyramid, pyramid, and pyramid. Two pyramids stuck on top of each other. So that's where trigonal bipyramidal comes from. That helps you visualize it, okay? Um, all right, let's move on. So we're still going to have five electron domains, but this time, we're going to add a lone pair. Our example for this one is a sulfur tetrafluoride. Let's look at it. Sulfur, lone pair right there. And then we've got fluorine, 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 and a fluorine down here. So this shape, there's your lone pair, the three fluorines in the middle, there you are, it's a triangle, and then you've got this bottom one right there. So there is, you can pretend like that's the triangle in the middle and here's the flooring down at the bottom. Now this shape, I'm sorry, I just think the name is stupid. You're going to have to memorize it straight up. It's called seesaw. And here's the idea that we would um, have like a seesaw. Here's the two people on the seesaw and here's the seesaw and they go back and forth, back and forth. I know it's stupid. Seesaw. Um, so memorize that, memorize that for the seesaw. Um, next, T-shaped. So now we're going to have two um, electron domains that are, here we go, that are lone pairs. So this one is going to be the T-shaped. And here you can see a, a lone pair here and here. Um, our example on this is going to be a chlorine trifluoride. So you've got the chlorine, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair. Sorry, so it's my two lone pairs. And then pretend that this is the middle triangle right there. 
Um, so count electron domains around the chlorine. One, two, three, four, five. So the electron geometry is still trigonal, um, pyramidal, but the molecular geometry, okay, let me have you look at it a second. There's your lone pair and lone pair. They call it T-shape. So connect this line and then go down. Seesaw and T-shape are the silliest names and the ones that you just have to memorize. I'm sorry, it's in the five electron domain. So this one is called T-shape. If you can pretend straight line and down, there's your T-shape. Um, okay. Last one in the five electron domain is when you have three lone pairs. There it is, one, two, three lone pairs. Our example for this is going to be a xenon difluoride. So xenon, we've got the fluorine and the fluorine, and remember each fluorine has three lone pairs, and then you've got a lone pair, second and third lone pair around that xenon. So if you count the electron domains, there's one, two, three, four, five, so the electron geometry is trigonal pyramidal, but the molecular ge geometry, what you see, you can't see those three lone pairs, it's linear. And so the name of this is linear. Now I wanna come back to angles. So notice the angle for this is going to be 180 degrees. Um, for the five electron domains, you have to make sure that you write down um, two angles. I'm gonna go back to our original one right here on the uh, trigonal bipyramidal. Let me show you this. So you've got the 180 top to bottom. You have the triangle in the middle. There's a 120. And then going from the top, I'll show you the top down to this middle is a 90 degree. It's a right angle. Uh, so this is 90, 120, and 180 degrees. And that's going to be true on all of these. Now notice these amended just a little bit. The lone pairs, remember they have a greater repelling power, so they kind of push those bonds further away. Um, I wouldn't memorize those. Just remember 180, 20 for that um, triangle. And then from the top down to the triangle, that is a 90 degrees. Um, so this, definitely the most complicated on, um, on the angles. But if you picture it, make it make sense, okay? The names, the angles, visualize it, you'll have it, you'll have it. Okay, now we are going to go to six electron domains, and that's going to hit right here. Six electron domains, um, the electron geometry is called octahedral. Octahedral, okay. So here's an octahedral. That's what that looks like right there. Um, our example for octahedral is a sulfur hexafluoride. Let's go ahead and write it down. So there's my sulfur central atom. We have fluorine, two, three, four, five, and six. Now how to visualize this. In the middle, it's a square. If I connect those sides, it's a square. If I turn it up, you've got a right angle. So squares, let me see, okay, so you can see the square, right angle, bring it up, also a right angle. All of the angles on octahedral are 90 degrees. Now how to picture this. I have a square here in the middle. If I were to um, do faces, connect from top to each of these, notice each one has a face. One, two, three, four. Same with the bottom, one, two, three, four. That's where it gets octahedral. There are eight faces if we were to connect to these. Um, so the base is the square, um, and so you, there's eight faces. That's where octahedral comes from. Um, okay, so let's count electron domains. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the electron geometry is octahedral. There's no lone pairs. We have six bonds. We can see um, all of those uh, substituent atoms, which makes the molecular geometry octahedral. Molecular geometry will also be octahedral. Okay. Let's add one lone pair. Here we go. So we put a lone pair right up top. The uh, example for this is going to be a bromine pentafluoride. So we will have one, two, three, four, five. And remember each fluorine has three lone pairs around it. Let's go ahead and count the electron geometries around the bromine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to have three bonded and one lone pair. That is three bonds and one lone pair. Um, so six total electron domain, domains. The electron geometry is octahedral. It's going to determine 
to determine the shape of the molecule, but what we see, we can't see that top one. So this is called square pyramidal. So remember this middle part, that's a square. You can see the square, okay? The, if I connected all of these lines, we have a square. Now if I go down, if I connected these faces, it would look like a four-sided pyramid, hence square pyramidal. That's where that name comes from. And the angle in all of these, still 90 degrees. Still 90 degrees for all of those. Okay, next one is going to be when we have two lone pairs, two lone pairs on this. Um, and our example is a xenon tetrafluoride. So xenon, two lone pairs, and then we've got the four fluorine atoms. And remember, each fluorine has three uh, lone pairs. Okay, count electron domains around the central atom. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six electron domains, the electron geometry is octahedral, but the shape that we see, this one you'll like, is pretty easy to see. Okay, you can see that there's a square. If I connect the lines, there's a square, but it's on one plane. Those are lone pairs that we can't see. So this is called square planar. Square planar. Um, and for this one, um, you're going to have the 90 degrees around everything, 90 degrees. If I did go top to bottom, you've got the 180. Um, but between every single atom and even the lone pair, it's a 90 degree. Okay, very good. Um, okay, I hope that helps um, explaining. Here's the key. Number one, count electron domains. So you draw that Lewis dot structure, count electron domains. Number two, consider how many bonds, how many lone pairs. And then number three is muscling through and just brute memorization. Memorize the names, memorize the angles, and you'll have it. All right, good luck, thank you.